It is November, the final month of spring. We are in a big wetlands area near the port of Brisbane, south of the mouth of the Brisbane River. Many different species of birds find here an ideal place to breed, from the big aquatic birds to the smallest passerines. The window is the end of spring and the whole summer. The laughing kookaburra is the largest of the kingfishers in the world, but does not eat fish. Got its name from the loud territorial sound that it makes. It owns a large bill that has a black upper mandible and a tan lower one, and instantly recognizable in both plumage and voice. Eats anything, from the smallest insects to lizards, venomous snakes and offsprings of other birds in nests. They build the nest in a tree hole or a termite's nest on a tree. Pairs bond for life and young chicks are cared by all members of the family. Nearby a pair of white-breasted wood swallows also are about to breed. Wood swallows are a frequent sight on early morning or late afternoon, from cities to the outback, perched over the areas they catch insects on the wing, generally woodlands and wetlands. They are not related to swallows but to blackbirds like butcherbirds, currawongs and the Australian magpie. The white-breasted wood swallow builds a shallow, bowl-shaped nest from grasses, roots and twigs, lined with fine grass. The nest is placed in a tree fork, hollow stump, or inside the abandoned nest of a magpie lark, in this case on a paperbark tree on a swamp. On a grassy area nearby, on an artificial pole built for the purpose, a pair of osprey breeds twice a year. Fish nearby and a safe environment does it all, they are most of the year in breeding phase. The more widely known ibis is the Australian white ibis, once believed to be related to the African sacred ibis, but it is an Australian native bird. They tend to be opportunistic scavengers, are spread in urban areas like pigeons are in other main cities in the world. They start breeding early in spring in many areas, here in the wetlands are on the bush and small trees around the ponds. Ibises built platforms. Since they are colonial birds, they make them close, sometimes too close. The proximity and the stealing of materials cause many disputes. 20 km south, in a big park beside the Tingalpa Creek, two lagoons and big trees are a familiar sight to host many birds. The noisy miners breed in colonies and several broods may be reared in one season. The female constructs the nest and incubates the eggs alone, but both parents care for and feed the young birds. Additional helpers also feed the young. Interestingly, these helpers are almost always male birds. Spotted a bird going frequently to a tree, and based on long experience, it seemed likely that there might something promising there. Yes, it was, the female was giving the last touches to the nest. The screech of the sulphur-crested cockatoo can be heard in many parts of eastern and northern Australia. They are found in a variety of timbered habitats and are common around human settlements. The birds stay in the same area all year round. The nest is made in a suitable tree hollow, which is prepared by both parents. As with other parrots, these cockatoos are very picky choosing their nest holes, they take considerable time doing it. After many roundups and tries, finally settle in one.
The dusky moorhen is a medium-sized dark grey-black water bird with a red bill and a red facial shield. Besides Australia, it is also encountered in Southeast Asia and India. Normally it is seen in wetlands together with the purple swamp hen and the Eurasian coot. Feeds on algae, water plants and grasses, as well as seeds, fruits, mollusks and other invertebrates. During the breeding season, the dusky moorhen forms breeding groups of two to seven birds, with all members defending territory, building nests, and looking after young. Their dedication to breeding and the care of the young is notorious. The nests are generally floating platforms, made out of reeds and other water plants. The nest we will follow is made over a tree stump on water. The little corellas are small white parrots that congregate in large numbers to breed in these areas where food and water are abundant. They are always near water and where seeding grasses are found. Little corellas are thought to pair for life and will start breeding at the start of a long period of rain. The nest site is a suitable tree hollow lined with shavings of wood. The striking colors, his aggressive territorial behavior, the high-pitched sounds, the tireless search for food and their abundance make the rainbow lorikeet unique unmistakable among all species of Australian parrots, the real joker of the avian world. They breed in these woodland areas in large numbers. Small holes are suitable for them and pairs are seen on most trees. We are back in the wetlands a couple of weeks later and breeding is in full swing. Several nests of Australian data are in different stages of progress. The same occurs with the cormorants. Laughing kookaburra have chicks, extremely hungry, making them start to bring praise to the nest, each time bigger, with higher frequency. This is the female, she enters the nest to feed the offspring. The nest is practically predator-proof, the chicks are aggressive and the parents are always on the alert in case of a snake trying to enter. The male stops at the entrance to do the same. It is not a matter of the size of the bird, though, they are about the same. The ospreys are still incubating. They give touches to the nest, switch sides on the eggs and this will go for a while, big birds' eggs take long to hatch. The white-breasted wood swallows also have chicks a few days old, three of them. At the beginning the parents stay on the nest to protect the newborns. When one senses the other coming, give space to the partner to feed.
crevice is still sitting on eggs. The one of the right trying to avoid any confrontation with the couple on the left. Another couple nearby is on the same business. There are many kingfishers in the area, the forest and the sacred, they also are about to breed, we'll look for their nests later on. Back in the park beside the river, the noisy minor chicks are born. In the following two minutes, compressed for the video, we watch the hectic activity around the nest with the parents and helpers feeding the young. One sitting, left for a second arriving to feed, then leaves for a third, that feeds and sits. A fourth arrives. A fifth. A sixth. A seventh. We cannot say which one has come more than once, but the images show how dedicated is the mob to raise the brood. Came back later, when the sun went up. Another angle of the nest but the script has minor changes. The dusky moorhen has three chicks in her tree trunk nest. When the chicks are small, still on the nest, she does not leave them alone. She stays there to be fed from some of the members of the breeding group, and then she gives the food to the brood. Normally the nest is a floating platform, or is made on something just above the water. In this case the feeding looks more likely a juggling act, previously rehearsed by the characters. In fact, they improvise and are very good at it, hence the success of the species. In a nest of sulfur-crested cockatoo, the male is perched at the entrance, flees, followed by the female. In another, the female is perched at the entrance, the male arrives, switch positions, displays, and later the female goes in, the male stays on guard. Up in the canopy, Agala is making a hole for his nest. Back at the wetlands, 
the laughing kookaburra go hunting. A big worm is about to be delivered. The chicks are bigger and now both parents feed from the mouth of the hole. The parade is endless. They catch anything, the specialty is lizards, they are anywhere in Australia. The big dish is snakes. The lucky chick sucks it up whole. Chicks are grown up on Osprey's nest and are being fed by the parents. They are strengthening the wings with constant exercises. At the right moment they begin to fly and return to the nest till the day arrives when they leave it forever. The three white-breasted wood swallows chicks are all alive and progressing well. Good strategy of the parents to place the nest on the melaleuca tree with the trunk inside the water. The clips we see are from the brood from five to nine days old, still near a week to flee from the nest. The ibises on the right have three small chicks to feed.
A neighbor couple nearby have one very grown up and one very small that, most likely, will not survive. Still another couple in the colony have two left to care for. The noisy minor brood is about a week old and the activity on the nest is business as usual. Sometimes one might think that they are fighting, it looks like that. But it is a competition, who can do a better job bringing food to the nest. Days pass by, chicks grow fast and soon we have three big like adult chicks in the nest, almost ready to flee. We thought that it might be the day, looking at the behavior of the brood and the adults, but it was not. 
The next day we arrived at dawn and one chick was gone. Soon the second one jump up to the canopy of the tree. We stayed with the third, who encouraged by the calls finally went out, very slowly and cautiously. him from one tree to another till we lost sight of him. Back to the kookaburra nest. The cheeks peek out and are called by the parents, not bringing them food to oblige them to jump, but as before with the miners, that was not the day. Arrived early the following one and all were out, they did it when the light was not enough for filming. We followed them till we were able to do so, till we lost sight through the forest. Kookaburras, ospreys, wood swallows, miners, lorikeets, cockatoos, moorhens, corellas, ibises, a collection of successful breeding stories through different strategies and adaptations, developed during millions of years, a lesson that man does not want to learn and respect.